Oh, the nostalgic tingles of a 386 booting up. It sounds awesome. It just sounds like my childhood. Hi there, it's Timmy and Joe making videos about those things. Internet, who doesn't know what the internet is? Come on there. And today on the program, my first computer. My very first, com well, sort of. I, I bought some nostalgia on eBay. That's what's happened. But before we get into that, go in the comments right now and tell me what your first computer was. And I don't mean like the first computer that you physically owned. The first computer you had regular access to that got you into it. Could have been a school, could have been whatever, but I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot of Pentium Ds and Pentium 4s and Core 2 Duos in the comments. Uh, and I'm severely aging myself by showing what my first computer was. So let me know in the comments, I'd like to know. So I'm gonna bring it down memory lane here and uh, we'll start off with a video of it because I have a video of it. I, I got this game and it's real cool. Yeah? Yeah, it's, uh, it's called Keen. I got Commander Keen, I don't know which one it is, but I have already two Keens on this computer. This is way more better. Okay, well, bye. Yes, that's played in my intro for about six months, whenever I actually put the intro in the in the video, but uh, my Uncle Chris found that and sent it to me, and I gotta thank him, thanks dude, because I had no evidence of this computer, no physical evidence, because, I mean, it got sold in a yard sale the minute we got a different computer, I'm sure, and uh, I've been through bins and bins of old pictures, but no one ever thought, hey, let's go take a picture in front of the family computer. So, uh, you know, I never found that exact computer, but there's my 386, and it looks pretty damn similar to this, doesn't it? It's got a lot smaller of a monitor. I'm using a lot newer of a CRT, but you gotta have a CRT on it, but uh, fairly close. It's got a CD-ROM and some speakers. Never had that when I was a kid. A little bit of that added bonuses for me here, but uh, I've been searching for a computer of this origin for ever since I began doing videos on YouTube about them. It's just impossible to find this era of computer just laying around. I've actually even seen some at the uh, electronics recycler, like in our hometowns run by the city. They wouldn't let me take the damn thing home because it's got a hard drive on it with people's information. I, I, I fought tooth and nail to try and let this city employee, let me take a 386 era computer home. It's probably a little newer than that. I was thinking maybe it was 100 megahertz or something like that. And he would not let me. So. I had to resort to eBay and I finally, you know, had a little bit of money kicking around. I wanted some new content for the channel and I finally pulled the trigger on it and I went absolutely bonkers with it and I paid way too much money. So you might ask, why didn't you build the computer yourself? Well, these computers are hard to build. Not only are you dealing with, you know, uh, complicated ways of, you know, compared to now of, you know, putting hardware in a computer, loading drivers, setting IRQs, moving jumpers, you're dealing with that. And if you're gonna build it yourself, you're gonna go on eBay and take parts from here and there. You're not gonna be sure if something's not working, if it's the part or you just don't know what you're doing. Then you gotta find a hard drive that works, load, you know, DOS on it, figure all that jazz out physically, you know, use the media from then, or, you know, there are ways of doing it a little bit newer these days, but uh, instead of doing that, and I, I've been looking for like a long time, I'm looking for a 386, one that looked very similar to this, and I was almost buying 486, it was like half the price, but it didn't have a hard drive, and it didn't have a sound card, and I saw this guy on there, and I had to have it. It is an IBM clone, 25 megahertz, 386, and I'm sorry, it's loud, and there's like, a hundred garbage trucks driving by right now because my life. But yeah, the, just all kinds of uh, stuff to deal with when it comes to building one of these computers. So I found this one listing, this guy named Combinator, I think that's how he would say it. And he's got it absolutely completely set up. 386, 25 megahertz, looks pretty close to the one I had when I was a kid. It has a hard drive in it, it's set up, he has games showing running on it, it has a you know good video card, it's got a sound card. And I'm like, forget it, I'll just buy it. I actually shot him a, you know, an offer of $400 and apparently he never got it. I just wound up paying the full $459.99 on this, shipped to my door to get a 25 megahertz computer with an eight megabytes of RAM-ish, an 80 megabyte hard drive, an ad-lib sound card, a Trident video card, some speakers, but, 
it came with a keyboard and mouse and uh, I didn't want the if you see here there's a like a flat panel monitor and I didn't want that I have some of those if I was really going to use those I wanted to use this nice Samtron that I have which is way newer than the computer but I wanted to get you know pretty close to an approximation of what the computer should look like so uh, he threw in a CD-ROM instead of the monitor. So now I've got my 386 with all the bells and whistles that I wish I would have had at the time. So I'm like, yes, this is awesome. So going back to 1993, I, my mom's doing the go get schooled up on technology thing. She's learning WordPerfect and Lotus 123 at some computer academy. And somebody suggests that she buy a computer from some guy and one day this greasy guy comes and sets up a computer at my house. He had like greasy hair, uh, a white shirt that was more like a yellow. And I definitely remember the just reeking of BO. Like first time I smelled full on BO. So this guy's got full on BO, but he comes and he sets up the computer, looks pretty much like this. And we're dropped to C colon backslash. And you know, I've been playing around with computers a little bit at school, but I didn't know. We were, had a completely different style of computer at school called an icon computer. Shout out to my Ontarioans from the early nineties. But it had a ball. The Super cool stuff, but this was the first 386 I got to sit in front of. So I grabbed the DOS book at like eight, nine years old, and I start reading the DOS book and ingesting this huge textbook of how to run and how to go dir slash p and bring up the list of directories and how to go uh, dir uh, or wait, no, we'll go uh, cd games and load the games folder and then cd uh, wolf. 3D. So what's Wolf 3D? I had a bunch of, he loaded games on it. Well, the eBay guy had loaded a bunch of games on it. So I get to re-experience this stuff. So I go Wolf 3D and instantly I'm transported to my childhood. Except it's even better because I never had the ad lib to hear this. I had a PC speaker. So I get to hear music. This is so awesome. So I have a working 386 in front of me that's so close to the one that that greasy haired guy showed up with. Even looks pretty similar, it's pretty cool. But we can, you know, do not distribute it. It's PC-13. If you're nine, don't be watching this video because we're gonna kill some Germans. So I get to just jump into this like it's 1993 and it's loaded up on the hardware and I could go play this on DOSBox in a browser. Is it gonna be the same? No. Getting psyched will take a little bit le less time on that. So I get to have the full experience of the laggy natures of a 386. And I can go over here and I can shoot this German. Yeah, boom. Sorry that it's a little flickery. I can't get the refresh rate right. But, and I'll eat a turkey dinner. There we go. And like this brings me right back to my childhood. It's so cool. So I'm gonna just go quickly through what I got here today. But uh, I'm feeling very happy about my purchase, and uh, yeah, I could have built the computer, but like I say, I'm not, uh, it would take me a while to learn everything, and I don't want to turn this into an LGR channel, or, I don't, you know, I'd like to get reacquainted with this, but having a working example set up on my desk like this, delivered to my door from eBay, it was well worth the premium of $460 I spent on this for a 386 with a CD-ROM. Uh, a five and a quarter drive, a th close. Uh, got the old floppy disk here. Boom, Spe cost speakers. I put my own monitor on there and it's all set up. So uh, let's get to talking. All right, so we're booting back into the computer. I just wanted to run through it a bit here. And if I'm in slow motion here uh, with some pr pretty bad lag, it's because I have to put the camera's shutter speed down to 25 in order for it not to flicker. It is still flickering a bit, but uh, the, the screen is not running properly. In fact, every other time I boot it, it boots into a monochrome mode. And you can tell that because when you start it, the, it has the Trident drivers. Uh, uh, yeah, here, I'll show it. Um, and it won't be in color. And uh, when that happens, all your DOS games are gonna be in black and white. So you have to restart the computer several times. There's also problems where it'll just hang when it starts uh, right here. And I could type in a command like dir slash w and nothing happens. And I then have to control alt delete the system and it will eventually load back and work properly. So finicky to say the least. And it was set up by 
an expert, uh, well, somewhat of an expert, the guy I bought it from on eBay, he has his own YouTube channel building old 3D6 computers and, you know, from this era. So he knew what he was doing, and this thing still isn't set up right. So anyways, if we go in here, we see we've got some programs. He preloaded this. He actually filled the entire hard drive, which is kind of not great for me. 80 megabytes is not a lot, and I have no room to put my own disks worth of stuff on here. But... Uh, he did load some nice software. I can always get rid of it, which is pretty cool. So if I go CD, check it, and then check it, we'll load into a diagnostic and benchmark software that he uh, included, which is pretty cool. And uh, I've seen this lots of times on different videos, but I've never played around with it. And when I was a kid, I obviously didn't have check it uh, on my computer, but or maybe I didn't. I just had no idea what it was. But uh, yeah, you can run a main system benchmark here, and it'll show the CPU speed and see uh, you know how much faster it is than things. So let's ch let's check it out. We'll see how fast it is. We're at 25 megahertz. 880 meg hard drive, and we are 13 times faster than IBM PC XT. Interesting stuff. So we can go to uh, video and BIOS video CPS, direct video CPS. Uh, we've got a Trident video card in this, and it's five times faster than an IBM PC XT. So that's just for your information. It's got like 512K of, of RAM on it, so it's actually a half decent card. Uh, I think it's a little bit later than this computer would be. So return to DOS, and here we are. So what else can you do on a DOS-based computer? Well, you have to know all these tricks. I had to learn the DOS book in order to, you know, use FDisk, you know, and be able to, you know, display partition information to see what, you know, hard drives installed, and that I have 100% usage on the hard drive, because I was trying to copy stuff over, and it was saying not enough space. It's not as easy in Windows, you know. As in Windows, you could just go check out, you know, right-click my computer, and figure, well, th this was a lot more involved, so it's fun to think about. So if we exit F disk here, uh, we go DIR. Uh, well, well, I'm going to go CD games because we're going to go look at some games. Games DIR slash W, and we can see he pre installed uh, Carmen San Diego, Stunts, Arkanoid, uh, Wolf 3D, Sim City, Lotus, Prince of Persia, uh, you know, a Star Trek game. Uh, and then I was trying to put Jazz Jackrabbit on it, and I couldn't get it to work because there's no hard drive space, as well as Hugo's House of Horrors, which should be a very small Sierra. It was one of my first games I ever played on this computer or this era of computer. A anyways, I played it on a disc, which is something you can do. You want to load up a disk, you, you know, go you know, uh, A colon, should load into the disk here, DIR, ooh, lots of stuff, this, that, HHH, should be able to just load right off a disk here, you hear that disk loading sound, it sounds so beautiful. And you may ask, how did I do this? Well, I downloaded Hugo's House of Horrors off the internet, and then I have a USB uh, floppy drive. So there is ways to get stuff on and off of this computer, but you have to do it one megabyte at a time. And there's the PC speaker, sounding just lovely. So we're gonna play a little bit of this. You gotta go over here and open up the pumpkin. Because I'm a cheater. Open pumpkin. Okay. The pumpkin breaks to reveal a key. Get key. Okay. Unlock door. Okay. Open door. Oh, Sierra, and your amazing games. Walks like a drunk asshole, Hugo. Now it's loading off disk. There we go. I gotta get out of this. How do you turn the sound? F1 help. Turn for sound on and off. There we go. F2. <laughs> So, uh, you know, there's other games on here. If we go C colon, D, oops, D, I wanted to go C. So, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I can't use the CD-ROM right now because it actually takes up too much memory to have the CD-ROM driver load at the beginning of the, you know, for DOS. It takes up so much memory that I then can't load other games like Keen, Commander Keen. So if I go CD, Keen, and then he included all of the Keens, uh, we'll go CD Keen 4 and DIR, it's like Keen 4E. There we go. Load up Commander Keen, the game that I was playing in that original, uh, you know, video I showed you. But now we've got ad lib support, so I can play Goodbye Galaxy and I can play it with the beautiful sounds of Keen. There we go. Pretty cool stuff.
Yeah, I was only playing with a PC speaker back in the day, so this sounds so awesome. So here we go, just do a little, and then, ah! Uh, shoot that ball, grab some droplets of water, cause whatever, oh, you can shoot up. I forgot about that. Go in here and uh, grab the Coke bottles. See, this is all working beautifully. It's working awesome. So uh, what I always loved was the paddle board game. I'd play this forever. Of course, the garbage truck's outside. There we go, playing a little paddle war, one already. So yeah, this is my this is my childhood here right now. Also, one last thing I'll show you from anywhere we can type, win. And this is why the majority of my hard drive is filled, my 80 megabyte hard drive, because Windows is on here as well. It takes up about 20 megabytes uh, total, I think, of, of space on the computer. And, um, might even be more than that. But hey, I've, I never thought, I never had Windows 3.1 on my original 386. So loud. But here it is, I could have had it the whole time. I remember my uncle brought all these copy discs of Windows 3.1 over one day and he was gonna put Windows 3.1 on my computer and he couldn't get like disc 12 to work and we had to kibosh the idea. But here it is, Windows, and I mean, we could play Solitaire. There's nothing loaded on here. I can't play like Sims for, for Windows 3.1 or anything. But I mean, hey, look at this. The original MS Paint. That's how you spell world. There we go, so yeah. Windows 3.1, you wanna play some Solitaire? You wanna play some Minesweeper? It's all in here. But I get to play with this now, and I you know, I never got to do that as a kid on my original 386, so I get to do this now, it's fun. So I don't know, let's go ahead and we'll outro the video here, just like we outro Windows 3.1. And no, I don't wanna save. All right, so that's the 386. That's the new to me, but kinda of like my old, 386 that I bought for $460 on eBay. That's a hard pill to swallow. I could have bought so many things with $460, but instead I purchased some nostalgia for my childhood and this will give my uh, child an opportunity to see where my computer roots come. We're grinding the Oregon Trail right now. I want to be a banker from Boston here. That's pretty cool stuff. What's the name of your wagon leader? I don't know, but Munch, there you go. Butt munch. <laughs> Anyways, so I got this and it's all pretty well set up. There are some issues. Uh, the Trident video card, every other time it boots, loads in a monochrome mode in DOS so that games will show up in black and white. And you can only reset the computer and pray that it boots the right way the next time. Uh, there's also problems where sometimes it loads to a C colon backslash prompt and then you can't input anything and you have to hit control alt delete. Uh, but you know, considering the age of the hardware, uh, I was talking with the guy, Combinator, he's this guy on eBay that, you know, I bought the computer from that actually sets them up real nice. He's kind of an expert, you know, he knows way more than me anyways of this era computer. He's saying it's really hard to get computers of this era up and running right, even like remotely. So it's in a pretty good state right now. Sometimes, all right, it's, you know, it's full. I didn't know it would come absolutely filled the all 80 megabytes of the hard drive, so I've gotta find a better solution. I have a gigabyte hard drive here, I thought it might work, um, but I can't get it to read that. Seeing as it is an 80 megabyte hard drive, and this is like 12 times that size, I, I probably, you know, something, I don't know if you can load up that big of a hard drive on a computer this old, but then I have one of these SD to IDE adapters. It doesn't work in the computer. I have a feeling it's because there's no uh, master slave switch, and I was trying to load it in the slave position because uh, I want to copy everything that's on the hard drive onto a new media. So I'll have to buy a compact flash adapter and uh, an IDE adapter for compact flash and maybe like 120 meg megabyte compact flash card for this computer to be able to do that, but that's an, a mod I'd like to do. I'd like to get this running a little bit better, look at some Windows 3.1 software. Let me know in the comments below. What do you want to see me do with this? Is it stupid that I'm even showing it on this channel? Because uh, we deal with mostly new computer hardware, or are you interested in going down the Oregon Trail with me? I, I'd be interested to know, but thanks to the Combinator, he's the guy that made this computer, has an eBay 
account and sells this kind of stuff. Uh, I'll link in the description to his YouTube channel because he actually has a YouTube channel and there are videos of this computer on that YouTube channel. He does a lot of old computery stuff, so that's pretty cool. So thanks to him for setting this up. And uh, yeah, sort of period correct, 1992, 1993-ish computer from my childhood, looking very similar to that one I showed you in that brief clip of video. Uh, and it's just brought me right back in time to a, a time that was really a, a cool time in my life, learning technology and it's, you know, what shot me in this direction, this this exact setup, this, this exact kind of idea. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be here today if my mom wouldn't have brought home that 386 computer, I can almost guarantee it. So I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for coming along on this little ride with me. I'm going to ride the Oregon Trail. I got Butt Munch as my party leader, but we'll go uh, poo poo face, uh, you know, for the second one and we'll ride the Oregon Trail. But anyways, I'm gonna go play with this. Thanks for watching. This has been a brief trip down Timmy Joe Nostalgia Lane. Let me know in the comments what you wanna see me do with this as well as, again, what was your first computer? I wanna hear about it. I'll see you guys later.